In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a teaser section for your website inside the Framer. I did the same thing inside the Figma and Webflow. If you're interested to know how you can do the same thing inside the Figma and Webflow, you can watch the videos that I published recently about those topics. You can watch those videos by clicking on the pop-up banner on top, or you can, of course, find a link to those videos in the description of this video as well. Watching those videos will help you to have a better understanding of how these tools are working. And you, of course, eventually will have a better comparison between these tools. But before we go further in this video, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you are new here and if you haven't done yet, like this video and share your thoughts and opinion with me in the comment section. My name is Kian, here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. I usually start a design process by collecting the asset and foundational and basic element that I need in order to kind of finalize my final component and user interface element. Here, we would like to have a teaser in which we would have an image and a headline text and of course a CTA. Let's collect all these elements first. So in the framework, first of all, we have two place in order to kind of start our design or kind of collect and add our user interface element. The first place here is the web. Uh, and you can see that we have one home page already. You can see the canvas here and our frame. However, I would prefer to do uh, my exploration in the design in the canvas section, which is not connected to my final prototype or final website that we can even publish it in our custom domain. So this website section is basically the pages that we can have it at the end in our website we can just publish it directly and use it as a final product. So I do my exploration and design process mostly in the canvas. So I click on the plus button here and create a teaser section or teaser canvas. Here, I'm gonna delete this frame, the default frame that we have. And now it's time to collect the asset that I would like to have. The first thing is going to be image. So I'm gonna click on the insert here. And then here from the asset that we have, preset that we have, I'm going to the media section and click on the image. So this was the first basic element, image. The next one is going to be headline text as we did in the Figma in the other videos that I publish in my channel. And also you can watch that video by clicking on the pop-up banner on top. We just use a simple text layer. So I'm gonna pick the text tool here and click on my canvas and write down my headline text placeholder. I'm gonna make another copy from this text, which I'm going to use later on to design my CTA. So basically now we have all the basic and foundational element that we need for our teasers. And it's time to work on their styling. The very first thing that I would like to work on is my CTA button. For designing a CTA button, we need a text layer. And of course, another element in which we can define the background color of our CTA. Here in this case, I'm going to first of all work on the text layer that we already have here for our CTA. So I'm gonna select this text layer and here in the text uh, section of our properties panel, uh, I'm going to change the font color to white, the weight of our text to bold, and uh, the font size to 18 pixel. Now we have the text that we would like to have for our CTA. Now we'd like to create a frame because basically we can add a background color to our frame and then add this text layer into that frame. There is one combination key that we can use as a shortcut in order to create a frame and add this text layer into that frame, which is using the combination key control enter. So I'm going to select this text layer and then use the control enter in order to create a frame. I can rename this frame here from the layer panel uh, to whatever I would like to have, in this case, button. And then I would like to change the background color of this frame to something darker, maybe pure black. So I'm going to the style section of the properties panel. And here in the field properties, I'm going to set the background to something very dark. But as you can see, my button is not ready. We do not have any space around the text layer or padding, which we can call. So in order to add that, we can use uh, another feature in the framework, which is basically equal to auto layout in the Figma. Here we can add a layout to our frame by just clicking on the plus here in front of the layout section in the properties panel. When you do that, you basically have access now to many properties, which will help you to design more dynamic, a layout. Yeah, in my case, for example, 
uh, we can decide which kind of padding we would like to have. We have this properties, padding. I'm going to set the padding per corner because individually I want to define which kind of padding I would like to have. And for top, I would like to set it on 16. For button, same. For uh, left, I would like to, for right and left, I would like to set it on 24 pixel. However, you can see that we do not see the padding yet still. And the reason is because of the resizing behavior of the parent element. So in order to see the padding, we need to set the resizing behavior of the bottom frame in a way that it hug the content within itself. You can see it when I change the length of the text, the button frame is not going to follow the resizing changes that happen into the uh, content within itself. So in order to that make that happen, we need to select the button frame. And here in this section, we have width and height for this frame. Of course, next to these two, we have resizing behavior. For example, for the weight, we have the horizontal resizing behavior. And for the height, we have a vertical resizing behavior. So here for the vertical resizing behavior, I'm going to set it on the fit content, which is equal basically with hug the content in the Figma. And for the height, we can set it, of course, again on the fit content, which again is going to uh, hug the content within the bottom frame. And now we can see our padding very well. We can change the text within the button to whatever we would like to have. For now, I'm just leaving it as it is. So in the next step, I'm going to select the headline text layer and work a little bit on its uh, styling. Here in the properties panel, we have the text section in which I can just play around with this style of the text that I would like to have as my headline. So first of all, I'm going to set the font size on 24 pixel and uh, then maybe the weight of my text or the font uh, on the bold. And now it's time to combine the headline text layer with the button layer. First of all, in order to organize our design file a little bit better. And from the other perspective, if we use frame to combine these two layers, we would have some properties if we apply the layout in it uh, that will give us this possibility to design responsive layers and layouts. So I'm going to use the combination key control enter while I'm selecting these two layers in order to create a frame and add these two layers as a child layer to that frame. Let's rename the frame that we made to content section. And then here in the properties panel, I'm going to click on this plus next to the layout section in order to apply a layout on it. And then here uh, from the distribute section, I'm going to set it on the start and the align, I'm going to align it to the left. Of course, we can also define the gap between these two child layers, which is the headline text and the CTA button. I'm going to set it on 32 pixel. And for padding, I'm going to set it on 16 pixel. I'm going to select the padding per corner and set the top padding to zero. Later, we will see why I set the top padding on zero. But as you can see, we do not see the padding in a proper way. Uh, we do not have bottom padding or we do not have right padding. And the reason is that the resizing behavior is not set yet. So in order to design a responsive behavior for our layout, we need to follow this logic all the child layers need to follow their parent resizing behavior in a horizontal, uh, let's say, axis. However, in the vertical axis, the parent layer need to follow the content within itself or the child resizing behavior. To make this happen, I'm going to select the content section itself, the, the parent frame. And here in the screen section, we have this width and height. And next to that, as I said before, we have this resizing behavior. For the horizontal resizing behavior, I'm going to set it on the fix. However, for the height, I'm going to set it on fit the container. Now it's time to work on the child. So I'm going to select the headline text layer. And again, I'm going to scroll up uh, here in the size section. We have width, which I need to set the re horizontal resizing behavior on fill. In this way, you can see that how we create easily a uh, responsive layout in which we can easily increase and change the size of the parent layer and still everything works well. Or if you start to uh, change the length of the text, still the parent layer is going to behave properly. Before we go further, I would like to add a real image instead of this uh, kind of placeholder that we have. I'm going to double click on this image layer and then you can see that we will have this uh, kind of properties panel for the image. Here down there we have this on a splash button which 
will help us to kind of use the Unsplash plugin to choose image or import image into our design. So I'm going to just scroll down and pick one random image, for example, this one. I use the same image in the video that I made for the Figma and I made the same teaser there. So just get sure to watch that video as well. Again, you can find the link in the description of this video. Now it's time to combine this image section with the uh, content section for the same reasons that I mentioned before. I'm going to select these two and then use the combination key Control enter to create a new frame and add these two as a child layer. I'm going to rename this frame to teaser card and then here from the layout section, I'm going to click on plus to add a layout. For the distribution, I'm going to set it on start. For the alignment, I'm going to set it to left. And I guess for the gapping, I'm going to set it on 16 pixel. And that was the reason that why I didn't set 16 pixel top padding for the content frame that we had because I wanted to use the gap between image and that content section instead of the padding. In the next step, we need to get sure about the resizing behavior of the child layers and their parent layers. And we will follow the same logic that I mentioned in order to create and design a responsive uh, layout. So I'm going to select the parent layer, which is the teaser card. And here from the width and height properties in the screen section of the properties panel, I'm going to set the vertical resizing behavior and fit the content. In the next step, I'm going to get sure that the all child layers are going to follow their parent layer in the horizontal axis. So I'm going to select the image and here for the width, I'm going to get sure that the horizontal resizing behavior is on fill, which is the case here. I'm fine with that. So I'm going to select the content section and this time you can see that it was set and fixed. So I'm going to switch to fill. And now we basically are done with our teaser and our teaser is going to behave properly. I need to go one step further, get sure that the child layers within that frame, which was the content section, it still has this proper resizing behavior, which we see is not the case. So I need to get sure that I set the resizing behavior, the horizontal resizing behavior of the text, headline text, on fill again. For now, we are fine with the layout. I would like to add the corner radius to hold uh, the kind of teaser card that we have. I guess we can use this handle here in the corner. When we are selecting the teaser card frame itself, I'm going to set it on 12 pixel. And at the end, I would like to add another extra effect, which is the shadow. So in the properties panel, I'm going to scroll all the way down here in the style section, we have this shadow. I'm going to click here and add my shadows. You can just decide which kind of shadow you would like to have here. I'm going to set the blurness to 24 pixel and I'm going to reduce the transparency to 15 person. Maybe you don't see right now the shadows here, but later on when we create our final layout uh, with the white background, you can see the shadow there. Also, we can change the styling of the shadows later on there as well. In the next step, I would like to use this teaser card that we designed in order to make a teaser section, including three of them with the specific amount of gap between them. So I can easily just make a copy of this one and make my teaser section. However, I would like to convert it to a component, which will be a better way if we want to use one user interface element more than once in different places. It would be much easier if later on we want to do any changes in the design of this element. So I'm going to select the teaser card layer itself and then right click on it. And then here I'm going to click on the create a component. I'm going to set the name the same as it is, like teaser card, and click on the create button. In this way, we basically convert the design that we had to a component. I'm going to get back to the pages that we have, and of course, to the teaser section. I'm going to open the asset list. We will have access to all the components that we have here in this file. You can see that the teaser card is here, so I can make an instance of this component by just drag and drop it into my uh, design canvas. I'm going to make three of these teasers by just copy pasting it in my design file. And then I'm going to select all these uh, teasers and then use the combination key Control enter to create a frame uh, and 
Then I'm going to make a layout by clicking on this plus button in the layout section in the properties panel. In this way, I would have access to some properties such as gap, which I need to kind of define the spacing between these teasers. Like now I'm going to set it on 24 pixel and uh, we can of course also set the padding or I can just use my cursor to kind of increase the size of the parent layer. And in this way, we create a padding around the teasers that we have. I'm going to rename this frame to maybe teaser section. After I rename it, I'm going to right click on this layer and then create a component from it or convert it to a component. The name is fine, teaser section. I'm going to get back to the home page that we had in the web section. I would like to use uh, the uh, teaser section that we made. So I'm going to switch back to the asset list and here in the asset list, we have the teaser section. So I'm going to drag and drop it into my page. Of course, I see the sizing is not matching. I can increase the size of the main frame. And then we basically done. We are fine. We can play our prototype and our teaser section is looking good. I hope you learned something new in this video. And if it was so, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. And of course, share your thought and opinion in the comment section with me. I am going to read all the comments and please help me to kind of increase the quality of the videos and contents that I'm making for you by sharing your opinion with me. Before we finish this video, I have to mention one more time that I made two other videos in which I did the same thing inside the Figma and Webflow. I really recommend you to watch those videos as well. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.